Scythe gave their popular Mugen 5 CPU air cooler a facelift. It includes an all black aesthetic, an upgraded high airflow fan, and a brand new mounting system. And they're selling it for around 60 US dollars, which is a pretty nice middle of the pack price point for an aftermarket air cooler. The packaging's very scythe. Nothing fancy, but it's packed well enough to protect the cooler. I've never had any issues with bent or damaged fins with any of the coolers that I've used from Scythe over the years. It comes with everything you need to get it up and running on all the latest Intel and AMD sockets. If you want to see a full list of all the supported sockets, just check the video description below. I'll put all that information down there. The cooler also ships with a full-size magnetic screwdriver and a tube of Scythe's very own thermal paste, so you really don't need anything to get this thing installed other than what comes in the box. It takes up a total area of 136 by 110.5 millimeters and stands 154 and a half millimeters tall. So it's not a massive cooler that's going to take up all the space inside your build and become the center of attention because it's all you can see. And there's a lot of coolers like that out there on the market, kind of like this one here. This is the Ninja 5, also made by Scythe. So if you care about what the rest of your build looks like and want to take a look at the, the RAM and if you're spending money on fancy hardware and RGB and stuff like that, then giant air coolers tend to not make the most sense. That's one of the reasons I like to stick with AIOs, not necessarily because of the performance, but I just like to see as much of my build as possible. Something this size isn't really that bad. I mean, yeah, it takes up space like any other air cooler, but it's not really excessive. You can still kind of get your hand around it if you need to plug in fans and stuff like that. And most importantly, you can still see all your hardware, which is kind of where I was going with this in the first place. So that's a big advantage of this one. And that small, relatively compact size also helps it fit into a number of different cases as well. The CPU contact plates made from copper and it looks like it's coated in a layer of nickel. On the other side, there's some grooves or fins to help dissipate some additional heat. And then all the heat generated gets transferred all the way up to the cooling tower with six six millimeter diameter heat pipes. And they're all capped off at the top, which I think looks amazing. It adds a nice premium look to the cooler overall, as opposed to the unfinished look where they just kind of stick through the top and some are pointy and some are rounded and stuff like that. It's using an offset asymmetrical design that shifts the entire fin stack backward toward the IO panel to help leave as much space as possible at the RAM slots. Plus it's stepped to maximize clearance over IO shields, heat sinks, and additional RAM modules if you're using a motherboard with RAM on both sides of the CPU socket. The included fan's a 120mm Kays Flex Black Edition, so it matches the cooler's color scheme. Max RPM is 1500, airflow 66.5 CFM, static pressure 1.67mm H2O, and the noise profile ranges from around 4 to 30 decibels. All the corners have rubber anti-vibration pads, and Scythe's fans are really good quality. When you hold them in your hand, you can tell it's a nice solid build. They use fluid dynamic bearings, and I've been using Scythe products for a long time, and I've never had one of their fans fail on me. So I think they're really good quality, and you can kind of depend on them and know that they're going to last. And they do sell these separately, so you can buy these Black Edition fans if you want to add another one to your cooler, or if you just want to use them within your build. Installing on Intel 11 5X starts with the back plate that fits into the area behind the CPU socket on the motherboard. Four plastic spacers, one for each post, slide down against the motherboard and you can just press these on with your fingers, no tools required here. Mounting brackets drop onto the posts and sit on top of the spacers, there's one for each side of the CPU socket, and then four bolt nuts get threaded on and then torqued down with the included screwdriver. This cooler doesn't ship with any pre-applied thermal paste, so you've got to do that yourself. Now, Scythe does include a tube of their own branded thermal paste, and I think it's actually just fine. I've tested it in the past, and I put it up against some Arctic Silver 5, and I found the temperatures to be almost identical between the two. So I think you can feel pretty confident using the stuff that comes with it, so you don't have to spend any extra money and buy some aftermarket paste. And also, I think it's worth noting that if you're looking for a cooler in this class, you're probably not going after any overclocking world records, so this stuff's going to be just fine. Make sure you peel off the protective layer of plastic film on the cold plate and then lower the cooler down onto the CPU and use the included screwdriver to torque down the screws in an alternating pattern back and forth to apply even pressure. Connect the fan power cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard and then attach the fan to the cooler using the included wire fan mounting clips. 
That's all there is to it. It's a really simple and familiar way to install an air cooler. There's a lot of coolers that are out there on the market that install really similar to this one. So I think that's a good thing because it means you don't really need to learn anything new, assuming you've installed an air cooler at least once before. And it does come with an extra set of wire fan mounting clips. So if you want to throw an additional one on the cooler, you can do that. And Scythe did send one over for me for the testing for this video. So I'm going to be able to show you some results with the stock single fan configuration and then also this dual fan setup. For the testing, I'm using an Intel Core i9-9900K. It's an eight core, 16 thread CPU. It's in an Asus ROG Strix Z390 motherboard. There's 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance Pro RAM and a GTX 1080 Ti video card. Now you might be thinking the 9900K is not really the newest CPU on the market, and you're right, but it is a tough one to cool. This thing generates a ton of heat, and that's why I like testing with it. Idle temps were around 30 degrees Celsius in both the single and dual fan tests, with the dual fans turning out just a little bit more noise overall, but it's still a really quiet result coming in around 34 decibels of total system noise. So that was the idle test where the system's on, but we're literally doing nothing, just staring at an empty Windows desktop. For this next test, this is gonna be the load test, and this one's interesting. So for this, I ran Cinebench R20 back-to-back -to -back tests um, for three minutes straight. And with the single fan setup, temperatures hit over 80 degrees, and that's pretty hot. Adding in the second fan got it below 80 degrees, which is generally where I like to see my CPU temperatures. The interesting thing here is that adding in the second fan didn't really do all that much to the overall noise profile. It did make it louder, but definitely not as much as I was expecting. Let's make some sense of these numbers. So you've got the 9900K, a super hot running CPU that's tough to cool by any standard. We put it up against three straight minutes of Cinebench R20, which in my opinion is overkill and more, more of a stress test than a benchmark. Um, and we got some temperatures that were getting pretty high. They were getting up there, but still within the safe operating range for the CPU. And then the noise profile was actually really good overall. When you take all that into consideration and then look at the relatively compact size of the Mugen 5 and the fact that it's a $60 cooler, I think the results are actually pretty good. There's not many people that are gonna be interested in running back-to-back -back tests of Cinebench R20 for any long period of time. So that's why it's important to put these results into context and really understand what these numbers mean. If you're a gamer, this cooler is gonna do a perfectly fine job because you're not gonna see temperatures or loads on your CPU anywhere near what I just showed you. And that's the important thing to remember here. This is a nice middle of the pack cooler for a fair price. It's not the best cooler out there, but it wasn't meant to be. Overall, it's offering good cooling performance at an affordable price, and in my opinion, it looks amazing with that black color scheme. It should match any build, style, color scheme, whatever you're going for. Black just kind of goes with everything. So what more can you really ask for from a $60 cooler? Listen guys, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. Check out the description below for more specs and details, and also for the purchasing links if you want to pick one of these up. And get subscribed so you don't miss any upcoming content. And we'll see ya.